Okay, we're now we're coming into the entrance of the hill fort. So imagine two and a half thousand years ago, the Celts were building this magnificent structure, deep ditches and big banks, and this would have been the entranceway. Hi, I'm Erin Lloyd-Jones, an archaeologist with a real passion for digging deeper into British heritage and all of its hidden treasures. So there are a lot of hill forts around here. Oh, absolutely loads. Just in this small area alone, there's about six. And then within the whole of Dunbarshire, there's about 20. So what is so exciting about archaeology? Well, every item tells a tale, even a tiny piece of metal. So imagine the stories that lie behind a delicate hairpin, maybe an ancient rubbish heap, or even a body. Archaeology brings history alive and puts the people back into the past. The border between Scotland and England has seen a lot of activity over the years, with princes, politicians and the public. So now that we don't need a passport to pass between the two, let's take a look at some of the cultural attractions in the Scottish borders. Have you got a flash bottom near you? Do you know Harry Craig? Or perhaps you live in Llanfair, Pwthgwyngych, Gogerwch, Wyntrobwch, Llantysili o Gogolgoch. Place names can tell us a lot about their history, but also about the people who live there. These monuments have stood here for thousands of years, and we really need to make sure they're here for thousands of years. So working with the children also helps us cement the fact that they'll be the guardians of the future, look after it for years to come, and then hopefully people in 4,000 years will be still here enjoying the day. The children from Uskub and Mariskin in all the test rooms. This, this is a local school that's here, but any schools of children or families that come um, can actually experience uh, doing things at the castle. Um, and so if it's a bit more hands-on, they have a lot more fun, maybe stay a little bit longer, stay in the Maris, enjoy the town as well, um, and hopefully, you know, enjoy Wales as a whole. This is Digging the Dirt, the show that uses archaeology to tell stories too salacious, saucy and scandalous for the history books. This week we'll be looking at Fifty Shades of Clay, sexy objects discovered, more suited to the after hours. Thousands of years ago the UK was physically a part of continental Europe, but as sea levels rose at the end of the last glacial period, the area known as Doggerland was covered by the North Sea and we became Europe's largest island full of fascinating places which make Britain truly great. So where's your favourite place in Britain? Why do visitors want a little piece of the museum experience to take home and how can you and your shop make sure they do? No matter what size shop you have, no matter what shape shop you have, we'll be looking at how you can get the best from your space. Maximising shelf space, working out the customer journey. It's all about the product. Welcome to Culture Shop. Why on earth would they want to build a settlement all the way up here? Well, clue number one is the beautiful view. Not only can you see who's coming, but they can see you. So maybe this was a place that people met or came to market to trade their goods. For the archaeologist on land, the main dangers come from land developers. But for the marine archaeologist, the sea is their biggest threat, as they try to preserve shipwrecks from the pounding waves. Each fragile wreck is a unique time capsule of our past, encrusted cannons, ancient wine bottles, and other historical treasures. Treasures that the sea is loath to give up. So this is the story of underwater archeology. span A London eye, a Ferris wheel, and a tourist attraction with over 3.5 million visitors each year. Brick Lane, East London, is the place for a good curry, good music, and a good bagel. And the Thames. It's funny how we forget it's even there. But now, with the regeneration of the South Bank, it's hotter than ever. But let's find out what else you had to say. I'm really lucky that I've done a lot of TV and radio work in the past, um, talking to some really interesting people and talking about work I've done before. One time, for example, doing a modern art exhibition where there was a big willy and it was going out on live on breakfast morning news. So I had to cover that up very quickly, so very reactive. But I really want to get into other things, making people excited about the countryside and heritage in their area. So thanks for letting me share my world with you. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Well, she said it was steep. And it is. It's not really. <laughs>